this inheritance pattern pedigree one question will obviously be asked on x linked recessive x linked dominant mitochondrial inheritance you need to recognize the pedigree what is the meaning of this double line doctor double line means consanguinity mama ki beti ko shaadi karna kyunki all classmates rejected a love proposal so you have a consanguinity and uh, both the parents are not affected unaffected parents because it is autosomal recessive both the parents to being unaffected can still can lead to an affected child is what you have to basically remember so it is autosomal recessive so what is the story of it parents won't be affected but recurrence risk is 25% 1 in 4 males and females equally affected because it is autosomal recessive father to son transmission is very much possible there all the true statements is what need to be remembered so there will be 7 to 8 points on each of these inheritance patterns that you need to remember where do you see complete penetrance complete expressivity autosomal dominant all structural protein genetic disorders are all autosomal dominant hereditary serocytosis what is it due to spectrin deficiency spectrin is a structural protein marfan syndrome is autosomal dominant so it is due to collagen which is a structural protein rate limiting enzyme disorders are all autosomal recessive they occur very early part of life they are very severe in nature is what you have to basically remember heart defects microcephaly mental retardation high pitched cry and uh, hypertelorism flat uh, nasal bridge they are all the things that you see in the case of creditchat syndrome which is due to 5p minus is what need to be remembered there is a early morning stiffness what is a very classical thing around the joints you are seeing doctor periarticular osteoporosis around the joint a bone and uh, this bone you see in both the bones you are seeing periarticular osteoporosis is a feature of a inflammatory joint disorder like rheumatoid arthritis commonly rheumatoid arthritis along with erosions you can also see the presence of erosions erosion is nothing but a bitten kind of appearance of the bone so rheumatoid arthritis what is the type of hla associated hla dr4 is what you have to basically remember gayatri vijay and many more online students <clears throat> now what type of receptor is over stimulated in this individual who has a duffy handshake acromegaly is there so in acromegaly you have a tyrosine kinase associated receptor is what you need to remember a 42 year old from navi mumbai has arthropathy diabetes hepatitis fundamentally hypogonadism loss of body hair i don't need to look at the image also without looking at the image only i can be able to tell what is this it is a slate colored coloration of the skin may not be visible on your paper based exam but all of you are getting on the smartphone no if you type the url given in the paper based question paper if you go to url you will get all images available in the news per medico blog huh? so it is a classical case of uh, hemochromatosis and uh, in these individuals uh, they can have uh, uh, the presence of uh, a specific mutation which lead to development of a improper iron loading is what i want to under hereditary uh, form of uh, uh, iron overload state 52 year old developed fever dyspnea chest radiograph is being shown to you and uh, which of the following is associated with a low risk of development of this condition so what is the condition we are talking about what is this condition we are talking about 
let's go back to the history hospitalized patient develops fever dyspnea chest radiograph is there typically you are having a consolidation on to the right side which is commonly associated with uh, sorry not consolidation consolidation is there uh, involving both the sides in fact uh, but uh, more so you are able to see it on to the right side so uh, it is generally in a semi comatose individual aspiration is one of the important risks that can develop and uh, 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 and also whenever you are giving uh, agents which suppress the acidity of the stomach that also enables the overgrowth of the organisms in the gut and that is also also a predisposing factor is what we need to appreciate a 26 year old is having an eye unsightly inflammation what do you like to call this as it is a typical example of uh, acne vulgaris so uh, what is a uh, true statement about this entity suppose if you give systemic antibiotic is there any indication in management of acne vulgaris no so it is not useful is uh, a easy question eh? in severe cases still systemic antibiotic therapy is uh, not really required because it is basically the overlying uh, uh, comedones which have got infected and uh, a topical antibiotic therapy also is not generally required but if required topical antibiotic therapy is more than enough no indication for systemic antibiotic therapy that's a point of interest here <clears throat> a 20 year old sexually active man from guntur presents with a genital lesions that started like a painless lesion and ultimately penis is appearing as such it has been bitten and what will this ulceration ultimately lead to sometimes self amputation auto amputation of penis also can occur it can even occur on the labia so what infection are we basically handling it is the classical nature auto amputation of the genitalia can be a feature in case of dorovaniosis which lead to a destructive bacterial infection of the genital area is caused by calimetobacterium is what you have to basically remember now in the figure shown to you what do you see you see an nebula and you see some adherent white plaque like lesions kissing disease is what infectious mononucleosis so it is transmitted by saliva and uh, how are the antibodies of uh, the epstein barr virus typically they are very short lived is what you need to basically understand <clears throat> a 48 year old is admitted to the coronary care unit yeah can the online students can punch whether the voice is loud and clear a 48 year old is being admitted to coronary care unit two hours after the admission his blood pressure is 86 by 52 hypotension ecg was taken what is a very very important feature you are seeing in ecg you like to comment or shall i tell you which leads are showing st segment elevation lead 2 lead 3 and avf are showing st segment elevation and before the qrs complex uh, i mean if you look at the rhythm strip commonly inferior wall mis are all associated with what ischemia to the av node and because of that they will go into heart block so what you are having here is a inferior wall mi and uh, there is a junctional escape rhythm why you call junctional escape rhythm there is a p wave there is no p wave before qrss is there any p wave uh, no 
there is no P wave. And how is the QRS complex narrow or wide? Narrow. So, absent P waves with a narrow QRS and uh, how much is the rate? How much is the rate here? You are having uh, almost 3 large boxes between uh, 2 QRS complexes. That is around uh, 300 by 3. 100, around 100, 300 by number of large boxes between two QRS complexes is the heart rate. So, whenever you have a heart rate of 100 with uh, a narrow QRS with an absent P wave, it means to say what? Junctional rhythm is what you need to basically remember. So, typically the um, inferior wall MI is uh, accompanied by junctional rhythm and how do you manage that? You need to relieve that block which is happening at the level of the AV node. So, that is basically managed by giving atropine. But actually this junctional rhythm here anyway the heart rate is around uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, na, almost 100. 100 means generally indication is not there for uh, atropine. I think uh, the same junctional rhythm at one point of time will go into Brady. Whenever it goes into Brady cardia then there is actually an indication for atropine. I think I am sorry about uh, ECG must to provide a ST elevation with a bradycardia with a complete heart block. That is a more appropriate ECG to fit into this scenario. Huh? Yeah. Now, doctor, you are able to get what I spoke or is it Greek and Latin? For how many? It is Greek and Latin. Inferwal MIMA, AV node ko ischemia hota. Iske vajay se junction rhythm ho sakta. Iske vajay se uh, AV node block can occur. When the AV nodal block is there, significant bradycardia is there and patient goes into hypotension, then we need to give atropine. But actually this ECG is not fitting into that because it is only showing inferior wall MI, but still patient is not having brady. Patient is having tachy if we calculate the heart rate. So, probably I need to change the ECG. I mean, we need to repair the ECG. Ah, this ECG is a perfect ECG. Yeah, yeah below. 65 year old in emergency room with acute onset of chest pain and ECG is being shown and he is pulseless. What is this ECG? You call it as ventricular fibrillation. Tachycardias are of how many kinds doctor? Give me the board please. <coughs> Tachycardias are of how many kinds? Tachycardias, whenever patient has a tachycardia, look at the QRS morphology. Okay, um, tachycardia with a narrow QRS or broad QRS you look for. When it is broad QRS, look at the rhythm. Is it regular rhythm or is it a irregular rhythm? Whenever normally how does the heart, uh, where does the rhythm start? SJ node, it will go to AV node. From that it will go to both the ventricles through Purkinje fiber system. If the tachycardia originates in the SCA node or in the atria or in the AV node, typically QRS complex will be a narrow one. But whenever the tachycardia originates in the ventricle, typically it will be a broad complex QRS. Whenever it is a broad complex QRS, you look whether the rate is regular or irregular. Whenever it is a broad complex but the rate is regular, remember two causes for it. One is ventricular tachycardia originating in the ventricle. So, ventricular tachycardia. Second scenario kya hota hai? AVNRT not N. AVRT atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia it is called. That means from SA node it is coming to AV node, AV node it is going to ventricle, but there is an abnormal path which is connecting the atria and ventricle directly and from ventricle it is slipping into atria and causing the tachycardia. But where is it originating? From the ventricle. Is liye is for kya kete? It is called atrio ventricular reentrant tachycardia is the name given. And what type of tachycardia it is? Regular 
ब्रॉड कॉम्प्लेक्स टिया वीटी ऑल्सो देन वॉट इज ब्रॉड कॉम्प्लेक्स बट इरेग्युलर इन नेचर एज वॉट यू कैन सी दैट ब्रॉड कॉम्प्लेक्स बट इरेग्युलर रिदम इट इज हाउ विल यू आइडेंटिफाई रेग्युलर और इरेग्युलर रिदम सिंपल यू लुक एट वन क्यू आर एस नेक्स्ट क्यू आर एस नेक्स्ट क्यू आर एस नेक्स्ट क्यू आर एस यू सी द स्पेस बिटवीन दम इफ दे आर ऑल इक्वली स्पेस यू कॉल रेग्युलर इफ दे आर नॉट इक्वली स्पेस यू कॉल इट एज इरेग्युलर सिंपल है ना ईसीजी कार्डियोलॉजी न्यूरोलॉजी तुक्का एवरीथिंग इज वेरी ईजी डॉक्टर टू थ्री टाइम्स फर्स्ट टाइम सेकेंड टाइम इट लुक लिटिल एक्साइटिंग बट अल्टीमेटली हार्ट इज आफ्टर ऑल ए इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजन राइट इफ यू आर गुड इन कार्डियोलॉजी न्यूरोलॉजी हिमेटोलॉजी नेफ्रोलॉजी जनरल मेडिसिन हाफ योर प्रिपरेशन इज ओवर for a pg medical entrance you can crush half the competition away provided you don't lose marks in gynops ortho which are achievable subjects gynops means 30 out of 30 you should smash the examiner and come right you must bombard your answers 100% accuracy you should answer surgery also general medicine you should be good you must say that i am the best in general medicine and you are the best right because you are uh, you are attending uh, uh, dr murli bharadwaj you have to only be best right so vt avrt kya hota hai dr bolo regular broad qrs complex ventricular tachycardia i mean tachycardia then irregular hota hai ventricular fibrillation khatam aur narrow qrs hota hai supraventricular tachycardia which originate from sc node or from av node is what you have to basically remember now doctor <clears throat> so what do you want to do immediately begin cpr followed by defibrillation at 200 joules then 300 joules then 360 joules a shock b shock 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 finish what is a shock a is emitted on shock b b shock b is bretillium in shock then shock 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 is 200 300 360 finish then if the patient doesn't survive pray the god right so cpr advanced cardiac life support protocol you must be 100% sure now doctor what is the rhythm which is being shown on the electrocardiogram what is it basically associated very simple first calculate the rate between two qrs kitne bade dibbe hain do matlab heart rate kitna hai kitna hai 300 by 2 means 150 how is the qrs complex narrow or narrow then are you able to see the p wave yes but how is the p wave p wave is inverted p wave is inverted and there is a tachyarrhythmia and the qrs complex is narrow right so whenever it is a tachy can you give me the board tachyarrhythmia just now we discussed from where can it originate either supraventricular or ventricular in supraventricular where can it originate sc node or av node one of the two locations so first of all it is originating supraventricular how did you come to conclusion look at the qrs it is narrow then you must know whether it is originating from sc node or from av node how will you know you will know it very simple if sc node generates the electrical impulse and depolarizing the atria then the p wave will be erect but if jung av node is the source of the arrhythmia then the p wave will be inverted kyunki electrical impulse is going up instead of going down that is the reason p wave will be inverted if the p wave is inverted tachycardia is there qrs complex is narrow you will conclude that it is a case of 
what junctional tachyarrhythmia so where do you get this kind of junctional tachyarrhythmias commonly in the patients who are having the digitalis toxicity you get what are called non paroxysmal junctional tachycardias n patch they are called as non paroxysmal junctional tachycardias are very common whenever the patient is having digitalis toxicity is what you have to basically remember a 62 year old man loses consciousness in the street and resuscitative efforts have been undertaken then what is the common uh, uh, ecg has been shown to you uh, then uh, uh, what do you like to consider uh, disorders could account for this uh, scenario is the question what is so strikingly prominent in this ecg if you look at the t waves how are they they are all inverted and deeply inverted somebody who lost consciousness with such deeply inverted t waves they are called as cerebral waves whenever somebody is having a intracerebral bleeding then they get t wave inversions which almost look like the sulci of the brain gyri and sulci are there no like that the sulci of brain ke jaise deep t wave inversions there are 64 causes for t wave inversion t wave inversion kisi ke andar hai to immediately jump karke bolo nahi ki aapko mi hai bolke one of the causes is acute mi mi may what are the various things that will occur first hyper acute t waves will come then st segment will elevate then that hyper acute t wave will flatten and then the t wave become inverted and then q wave before r wave will appear before r wave which is a positive wave q wave which is a negative wave will appear this is the progression of the ecg changes on mi okay doc ha so intracerebral hemorrhage is what you need to remember similarly you must learn how to recognize osborn wave on the ecg which is seen in hypothermia then how to discover hypokalemic changes hyperkalemic changes hypercalcemic changes on ecg how to interpret long qt short qt there are totally 40 50 aspects of ecg or every entrance exam pg medical entrance exam dnb ho aims ho jipmer ho appg ho tgpg ho one ecg will be given and you can't afford to lose it and uh, hardly you will take 5 to 6 hours to revise ecg so that that one question you are bagging in your pocket of course you didn't prepare also suddenly he gave hyper acute t wave means uh, you recognize that's luck but luck uh, does not accompany as always right ha so doctor pulmonary capillary wedge which reflex which pressure left atrial pressure and left ventricular pressure tracing has been shown to you pulmonary capillary wedge and left ventricular pressure tracing have been shown to you this is the left ventricular pressure tracing and left atrial pressure tracing has been shown to you now uh, what is the most likely possibility in which individual this would have been there so fundamentally if you look at the left atrium pressure versus left ventricular pressure there is a huge gradient between these two and what scenario you will have a high left atrial pressure when the left ventricular pressure is low normally between left ventricular left atrium who is the boss who will have high pressure doctor we can't say it depends on systole or diastole systole mein left ventricle naraaz hota hai aur in the beginning of the diastole mein left atrium is pregnant with blood so its pressure will be high and when the diastole is continuing and the ventricle is getting filled 
and the atrium is getting unfilled then the pressure in the left atrium should fall down and the left ventricle pressure is supposed to rise during diastole how many didn't uh, get me i know we need to draw on uh, paper and then uh, discuss then only you will remember otherwise you can't have my 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 brain your brain can't be connected through wifi no or a bluetooth huh? this is the bluetooth your uh, give me the this thing see doctor you have a left atrium left ventricle forget about right atrium right ventricle left atrium pressure is reflected by pulmonary capillary wedge pressure now whenever the ventricle undergoes diastole it is getting filled from left atrium normally what happens is left atrial blood walks into the left ventricle so that the pressure of the left atrium which is pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is supposed to fall down and left ventricle pressure is supposed to rise right that is expected thing but if there is any mitral stenosis significantly then the blood in the left atrium does not go that easily into left ventricle so during diastole during the diastole of the left ventricle the left atrium pressure which is supposed to fall down doesn't fall down and it remains high and left ventricle pressure which is supposed to rise doesn't rise that easily because it is not getting that easily filled from left atrium so that is the reason it remains low and this low left ventricle pressure and a high left atrial pressure will create a gradient which you can see there left during diastole so the severity of that gradient on 2d echo is an indicator of the severity of the mitral stenosis is what i want to underscore to all of you so doctor the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is remaining high and the left ventricular pressure has not raised that uh, strongly so that is the reason the gradient is still maintained between the two during the diastole which is an indicator of severe mitral stenosis which occur in rheumatic fever is what you have to basically remember now a 53 year old presented with shortness of breath and what do you see here a wedge shaped infarct which is subpleural in location which is a classical feature of pulmonary embolism whenever pulmonary embolism is there what will it lead to pulmonary hypertension when pulmonary hypertension is there the pressure will fall on which chamber of the heart right ventricle if the right ventricle has to use a lot of pressure to pump the blood into the pulmonary artery the pressure of the right ventricle get back transmitted into atrium and that predisposes to tricuspid regurgitation and hence the tricuspid regurgitation flow on the doppler echo is the one which will help you to identify the severity of pulmonary hypertension how many don't un didn't understand raise the hand honestly i'm becoming a cruel teacher day by day huh chalo show me the see doctor it is just like our uh, school teacher used to teach uh, sanskrit class first one shlokam then the meaning of the shlokam right and after that writing that shlokam so that is how our cardiology classes are going on first i gave you some confusion in the brain left atrium right atrium it is pushing that is pushing etc now i'll put it on board bluetooth is this huh? this will connect my brain with your brain uh this friday i am presenting uh, a paper in uh, a world uh, medical education conference in london so there what i am going to talk is about uh, uh using whiteboard any number of technologies come still a teacher who stands before whiteboard draw it and then tell did you understand or not then only we understand unless you are prepared student 
if you are prepared your mind is in tuned to the frequency of my mind if two mobile phones are tuned then uh, all data transfer can occur right ha so let us talk uh, pulmonary hypertension is there pulmonary uh, artery opens into right ventricle the more the pulmonary hypertension the right ventricle has to pump it using more pressure whenever it pumps with more pressure some blood will leak back into right atrium here right atrium is there no and between the two what you have tricuspid valve is what you are having and that is causing tricuspid regurgitation this regurgitant jet velocity when you do 2d echo if it is more that means there is a more amount of pulmonary hypertension so what is the way using 2d echo you can grade the severity of pulmonary hypertension by looking at the tricuspid regurgitant jet velocity this is what i told uh, without using whiteboard before huh? yeah <clears throat> ah and uh, will you find right bundle branch or left bundle branch block if there is a pulmonary hypertension right ventricular hypertrophy come on doctor right ventricular hypertrophy lead to right bundle branch block left ventricular hypertrophy lead to left bundle branch block right so you don't find left bundle branch but right bundle branch block is a possibility is what need to be remembered now what do you see on this jvp the c wave and b wave combine together very prominently and form a common wave called cv wave such a cv wave with a prominent v wave is a feature of which condition is the question give me the board so let's talk about this jvp tracing what do you have in jvp first a wave then a small c wave then a v wave is what you have then between the c wave and v wave you have a descent which is called as x descent after the v wave there, there is one more descent which is called y descent right so why does a wave occur go back to the four chamber diagram when the atrium contracts and pushes the blood into the ventricle during the ventricular last one third of diastole the atrium contracts and pushes the blood in the last one third of the ventricular diastole that means first two thirds it doesn't contract and push then how will ventricle get filled in the first two thirds in the first one third because atrium has high pressure ventricle has low pressure at the beginning of diastole some blood flow will go second one third is because of gravity third one third atrium contracts and pushes the blood and that lead to what is called a wave and the ventricle got filled filling of ventricle is over at the end of the a wave so filling of ventricle is called diastole so diastole is over at the end of a wave after that the ventricle contracts and pushes the blood into aorta and when it is contracting and the pressure is building in it it lead to small prolapse of tricuspid and lead to little regurgitation back and because of that there is a rise in pressure in the atrium because of that small prolapse of the tricuspid valve and that small rise is called c wave right then when the ventricle is continuing to uh, what continuing to contract atrium relaxes and that lead to fall of the pressure in the atrium which is called x descent so during c wave what is ventricle doing contracting systolic during the atrial relaxation x descent what is ventricle doing contracting 
that is systole is continuing then what will happen after relaxation of atrium atrium get filled by the blood that comes from the great veins ivc svc everything and that rises the pressure in the atrium during that time what ventricle is doing contracting continuing to contract so even v wave occur which is due to the filling of the ventricle when the ventricle is undergoing filling of the atrium during that time ventricle is still in systole so with the end of the v wave the ventricular systole is over then the valve open and blood flows from atrium into ventricle and because of that the atrial pressure will fall down and that is called y descent and during that time what ventricle is doing he is in diastole so y descent is diastolic a wave is end of the diastole y descent beginning of the diastole but c wave v wave and x descent are during ventricular systole yes what you need to remember now v wave is become of what filling of atrium but if the atrium get filled only from svc and ivc fine but if the atrium is also getting filled from ventricle because of tricuspid regurgitation kya ho jata ye v wave jo hota hai atrium filling ke wajah se jo hota hai wo bahut prominent hota hai ek taraf se svc ivc uske andar blood ko bhija rahe aur dusri taraf ventricle also is regurgitating blood into atrium and hence a prominent v wave is what you basically get and uh, that is a characteristic feature of characteristic feature of uh, 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 tricuspid regurgitation is what need to be remembered now doctors a 23 year old with history of exertional dyspnea systolic murmur in the left sternal border is there ecg is shown what do you see v5 v6 may very prominent qrs complexes are there along with t wave inversion okay and uh, what else do you have uh, you are also having in the v3 v4 also prominent qrs complexes this much prominent positive r wave won't be there in v3 v4 because v3 v4 looks at septum v1 v2 is looking to right side of the heart v5 v6 to left side of the heart septum area may itna prominent qrs complex aa gaya bole to septum should undergo hypertrophy so it is a case of of what hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and when you have done 2d echo what do you see a prominent hypertrophied interventricular septum and what is it doing this is the mitral valve doctor i think the parasternal long axis view you should get an idea physical idea how it looks like huh? this is called parasternal view parasternal view mein aapko kya dikhai dega so fundamentally what you will see on a parasternal view is like this this is interventricular septum doctor okay and uh, from the right uh, left atrium this left atrium this is all left ventricle i am drawing but actually it won't look like this ah like this the blood is rushing through what mitral valve from where left atrium into left ventricle think heart is sitting like this like sri mahavishnu in padmanabha temple so from left atrium blood is going to left ventricle from left ventricle where should it go into aorta so this path is called as left ventricular outflow tract into aorta right 
and how is this track passing between the mitral valves anterior leaflet and hypertrophy interventricular septum this track is passing so if the interventricular septum is hypertrophied what will happen the mitral valve leaflet and the interventricular septum come close to each other and the left ventricular outflow tract into aorta become obstructed that is what will happen in hocm is what need to be remembered so this is the mitral valve leaflet which is touching the interventricular septum and from the left atrium the blood is going into left ventricle but from left ventricle it is not going to go out because these two are touching each other that is called hocm so uh, how do you treat hocm what drugs you should give you should not give all these things we discussed it how many of you did this question wrong can raise the hand today only after going home anatomy to medicine.com go to video library go to cardiology go to hocm go to review next 10 exams also you should correctly answer how do you differentiate the mvp systolic murmur from hocm systolic murmur why if you give nitrates hocm will worsen what is the effect of well selva maneuver on hocm hand grip exercise on hocm murmur everything we have ironed it out and put it on online video library please do a review doctor 34 year old from madurai with asthma with recurrent pulmonary infiltrates how are the infiltrates can you imagine the glow of a hand like the glove a gloved hand can you imagine the too much no to expect all that from you a gloved hand you don't need to interpret the gloved hand and x-ray let me tell you in image based question story story is important asthma recurrent pulmonary infiltrates 34 year old female from madurai madurai means what is the favorite past time of people doctor evening after having a nice sleep taking a nice shower the women will go with all full of uh, flowers in the hair to madurai meenakshi temple there are people who will do morning even darshan also throughout life such a devotional city it is right so they are developing pollen induced asthma bronchopulmonary aspergillosis i mean nothing to attach with madurai but i am telling you for you to remember in a long run eh? so they are called hand glove so it is alveola it is the immediate skin test reaction because it is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis see two types of aspergillosis are there doctor angio invasive aspergillosis where actual organism will go and cause vasculitis and lead to infarction of the lung everything and lead to cavity formation blah 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 then recurrent pulmonary infiltrates which are fleeting in nature with hand glove type of infiltrates is a case of what abpa allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is what need to be remember a 35 year old premenopausal women with pulmonary hypertension with dyspnea non productive cough and bronchoscopy was done bronchoscopic biopsy was done and then histology was done cystic lesions were there and what is this entity called as pulmonary leiomyomatosis is uh, the name which is being given so i leave a little literature but if this question if you did wrong no regrets this is a little uh, uh, out of the box kind of a question not a very high yield uh, topic huh? then a patient with ards has developed worsening of dyspnea when he is put on peep then what do you see here pneumothorax 
So, already ARDS is there. And you put him on positive end expiratory pressure. That led to barotrauma of the lung and led to development of pneumothorax. In that scenario, what is the best mechanical ventilation mode which you want to basically use? Pressure control ventilation is the best mode of ventilation is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, once more, you go through different modes of ventilation, what are the specific indications of each of them? Karshoff lung is there and what do you basically got in the urine? What type of cast is this? It is a fatty cast in the urine. Right? And uh, fatty cast, whenever they are there, nephrotic syndrome is on high carts. Nephrotic syndrome in a carcinoma of the lung, what is the common underlying cause of nephrotic syndrome? Give it a word. I think you all know nephrotic kind of presentation may there are three common causes. One is minimal change disease, other is membranous glomerulopathy, second is Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis also lead to nephrotic picture. Three important causes. Minimal change disease is a common topic in pediatrics and general medicine. Anything asked on MCD, you must answer doctor. Steroid response, responsive case scenario, how do you want to treat? Steroid unresponsive case scenario, what do you want to treat? When do you call frequent relapser? All those things in OP GHAI you are having the best place to read nephrotic syndrome to quickly review. Then membranous glomerulopathy. Whenever an elderly person presents with membranous glomerulopathy leading to nephrotic syndrome, always evaluate in him whether there is any underlying uh, malignancy. Generally that malignancy will be lymphoreticular malignancy like lymphoma. Should be evaluated. Then FSGS, normally nephrotic syndrome may proteinuria will be there, but it won't be more than more than three grams per day generally. But nephrotic syndrome is there, and proteinuria is about eight grams, ten grams per day. Massive proteinuria it is called. Then you suspect possibility of FSGS. That is what you need to basically remember. Okay, doc. <clears throat> so, membranous glomerulopathy can lead to nephrotic syndrome and common underlying causes, secondary causes, which would be malignancy, internal malignancy is what need to be remembered. Now, there is a urinary segment which is being given, sediment is being given. Rectangular shaped crystals are classically there. So, which type of crystals are hexagonal, rectangular, etc. All crystallourias, urate crystals, oxalate crystals, cystine crystals, everything you must be sure. So, this is an example of a cystine crystal, uh, sorry, urate crystal. Urate crystals are generally, what is the shape of them? Urate crystals, typically they are rectangular as what you have shown here. And uh, uh, what is the cause of urate crystal? Hyperuricemia. What predisposes to hyperuricemia? Anybody who has got the ALL who is undergoing chemotherapy, there is a tumor lysis and lysis of the tumor cell will cause the destruction of DNA. What is the end product of DNA metabolism? Purines. Purine metabolism will lead to urate, uric acid formation and that is the reason hyperuricemia, hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, the combination of the dyselkylitemia has marked the diagnosis of uh, tumor lysis syndrome is what you need to basically remember. A 45 year old has third episode of nephrolithiasis. And the laboratory findings have been given to you, her ABG, serum alkylides, serum chemistry, calcium is 9.5, 9.5 is a normal calcium.
but she has got nephrocalcinosis and her IVP is being shown. What is the characteristic appearance of this IVP call? It looks like a painting brush. Too much. Uh -huh, gloved hand, uh -huh, painting brush. So, paint brush type of calicial system is a characteristic feature of which condition? Typically in case of medullary sponge disease is what need to be remembered. Medullary sponge disease. I leave the remaining conditions, how to rule out them in the literature given to you. Now doctor, a real biopsy has been shown to you. 60% of the glomeruli are showing this kind of appearance. What is this appearance? It is not the end stage kidney disease. End stage kidney disease may entire glomerulus will be sclerosed. Mother, here is the focal, segmental sclerosis of the glomerulus is there. Only one segment, not all segments. Focal, segmental glomerular sclerosis is there. So, that is what is the histopathology of this glomerulus. Once more, what are the causes of the FSGS? You must 100% sure. A 24 year old known to be infected with HIV-1 stool culture shows enteropathogenic organisms is negative. Then uh, colonoscopy was done, multiple ulcerations are there. Histopathology was done. What do you see in this? Owl-eyed cells which is a characteristic feature of CMV. So, how do you treat CMV colitis? GAN cyclovir is considered to be the treatment of choice is what I want to underscore to all of you. Past 6 months, is the question paper too tough today? How many feel? Are fine, are you fine with this question paper? No time is there. Oh, little uh, today only because yesterday being Raksha Bandhan, our uh, staff are little tardy in. Uh, s s I mean, the photocopying got little late. Eh? So, the point is, um, image based questions when there are too many, time management is a challenge because you need to take a decision. It's like clearing an OPD. You look at the case history. Identify the fine points and then look at the image and then take a decision. So, that is a thing. Eh? So, anyway, the point is uh, next one to two months we will give tough papers relatively only to stimulate you. Of course, today's paper around 120 questions are standard questions. Stock remaining 60, 70, or 80 questions are little tough. But today you should, today's paper you should cross 120 marks minimum. Eh? That is the expected thing. Now doctors, past 6 months 50 year old had diarrhea, migratory arthralgias and malabsorption and past staining positive T was there. So typically what organism is past stain positive? Profirima vipulae which lead to Whipple's disease is a pass positive organism. Even TB also is a pass positive, but uh, AFB positive, sorry, AFB uh, is the stain used for TB, but this is a pass positive organism. So, there is a reason, think of uh, Whipple's, which shows villus atrophy, dilated lymphatics, pass positive organisms caused by Trophrema vipli, which is being treated by giving Primethoprim sulfamethoxazole for at least one year is considered to be the treatment of choice. 32 year old working for computer microchip manufacturing company from Gurgaon develops diarrhea, rectal bleeding and typically she develops this kind of pigmentation. Do not you feel that she went into a rain and had a raindrop kind of a pigmentation? You should imagine. Imagine everything is imagination, fantasy. Huh? So, uh, she developed dermatitis. Then, uh, what is the likely possibility? Arsenic poisoning. So, what happens in arsenic poisoning? There is a development of cardiomyopathy leading to prolongation of the QT interval, is what needs to be remembered. 
for the last 5 weeks 35 year old has intense vertigo tinnitus sense of fullness in the right ear etc etc there are no ocular palsies or long track signs high tone hearing loss is there and his angiogram was taken actually there is no abnormality this is a normal carotid normal uh, vertebral arteries then why did we give chumma to show you that uh, uh, there is a, how sometimes examiner can give a normal image also this is to have a differential diagnosis for vertigo any vertigo possibilities are the source can be from ear inner ear the source can be from the brain stem in the medulla the source can be from any insufficiency of the vertebro basilar circulation so here to rule it out we have done this and it is a normal scenario so what patient actually is having deafness with vertigo tinnitus dvt that is mean ears is what you need to basically remember a patient has this painful lesion which is being shown herpes simplex virus leading to herpes so that is the reason how do you want to treat a cyclovir is the one which you need to basically administer